capacitive power supply can be a dirty chip solution when it comes to provide power supply to low current and voltage DC devices that has to be connected to mains. However, this solution has its own severe drawbacks. I've tested the circuit to explore its characteristics and understand with you how it works and why it's a so shitty solution for powering small devices. The first thing to do when making such a test is to arrange some sort of isolation from mains to avoid shorts with instrumentation connected to earth, for instance the oscilloscope. If you don't have an isolating transformer, you can arrange one with two step-down transformers. Here I've used a couple of 220 to 18 volts transformers connected back to back so that the voltage is first transformed down to 18 volts and then rise it back to 220 volts while providing isolation. Beware though, because while our secondary is isolated from mains, we still have 220 volts, still a dangerous voltage, so be very careful and don't try this thing if you are not trying to work with high voltages. This is the schematic of our capacitive power supply under test. Again, the couple of transformers are not part of the actual circuit under test and are rigged up to provide isolation and limit the current in the case something goes wrong. The whole job is performed by the C1 capacitor. Its function is to provide a reactive impedance that limits the current by the following law xc equal 1 over 2 pi fc or we can simply calculate the theoretical current with the following formula ic which is the current of the capacitance equals to 2 pi c which is the capacitance v voltage and f frequency and entering the actual values of the components used in the circuit under test uh, produces uh, the, a result of 22.8 milliamperes, which is pretty close to the measured value. The 2.2 megaohm resistor attached in parallel prevent the risk of an electric shock of dangerous voltage when the circuit is powered off by discharging the capacitor. The full wave diode bridge rectifier has the function to convert the input AC current into DC output current. It is worth note that you cannot put a simple diode in the circuit in the case you are not interested in full wave rectification, because the C1 capacitor would see a DC in such a case and the circuit won't work. The resistor R1 47 ohm has the function to limit the current due to spikes when the circuit is switched on while the input sine wave is at its maximum. On the DC side of the bridge rectifier, a zener diode limits and stabilizes the voltage at approximately 6 volt. Since this circuit works in current that is limited by the input capacitor C1, the zener diode consumes all the current that is not consumed by the load, guaranteeing that the current that passes through the C1 capacitor can find a way to go. Alright, now let's talk about how C1 limits the current. Capacitors accumulate electric charges on their plates, so when the sine wave voltage of the input goes to its maximum value, this will cause electric charges to move from the source input to the connect plates of the capacitor and vice versa when the polarity reverses. Since moving charges represent a current, this current is determined by the number of charges that can be dumped on the plates of the capacitor over the time, and this number depends by the capacitance of the capacitor and by the time the voltage lasts at the source input providing charges, or said in other words by the frequency, here in Europe 50 Hz or a full cycle in 20 milliseconds.
So the current is not limited by a voltage drop as it happens in resistors, but because the capacity and the given time over which the charges have the chance to move from the plates to the source and vice versa. Also, since the charge go back and forward, the average current is zero. Therefore, ideally, there is no thermal dissipation. Real world capacitors have some series and parallel resistance, however, for the scope of this application they can be considered negligible. This is the core trick upon this circuit works. Not all the glitter is gold though. This ping pong of electric charges happens with a phase shift, which means that real current is much less than the apparent current, which anyway causes power losses. To read the apparent current, we can look at the voltage drop on the R1 resistor. With an oscilloscope, we can see that this voltage is out of phase of uh, almost 19 degrees with the input voltage, which means that this circuit has a power factor close to zero. Looking at the waveforms, we see that the current is distorted because the non-linearity of the diode rectifier and the Zener diode and the displacement cast by the leveling capacitor C2. The resulting value is approximately 1.15 volt RMS, which gives a current of 23 mA. The current measured with the multimeter on the DC side after the rectifier in this point is 19 mA and differs from the 23 mA because on one hand the instrument makes a simple average of the varying value while on the other hand the calculation that gave 23 mA is affected by approximation because I only used 10 samples from the waveform to calculate the root mean square. Now let's see how the circuit works. When in the positive phase of the input sine wave, from this terminal negative charges are sucked from the plate of the capacitor C1, leaving positive charges. At the same time, on the other plate of C1, negative charges are attracted and this causes, conventionally speaking, a flow of positive charges through this diode of the bridge rectifier, then through the senior diode then to charge the C2 capacitor and finally through the load resistor representing the consumer device. In return, this current comes from this diode of the bridge rectifier and from the other terminal of the input source that in this phase is negative. When the phase changes and becomes negative, the reverse happens. Negative charges are supplied and moved toward the plate of C1, filling the positive charges that were accumulated on the previous phase. And uh, at the same time, on the other plate of C1, negative charges are repelled, causing, conventionally speaking, a flow of positive charges from this diode of the bridge rectifier that collect the current in return from the Zener diode, the charges from the C2 capacitor, and uh, from the load that in turn receive a flow of current coming from this diode of the bridge rectifier from the input terminal that in this phase is positive. About efficiency, skipping the negligible losses of C1, I calculated the losses of each component in the circuit. Even though it has a mere safety function, I included the 2.2 mega ohm resistor. For resistor R1 I use the electron measure resistance and for the bridge two diodes are involved at any time so the voltage drop is multiplied by two. The sum gives the total losses under 20 mW, while at the output the maximum current of 15.4 mA produces 92 mW of useful power. So the resulting efficiency is about 43%, pretty low. Notice that because the power factor is close to zero, the current absorbed from the mains is far larger than the one that would produce the same power if the power factor were close to one. To give an idea, I've made this artistic representation of the power in relation to the input current. 
I said artistic representation because I don't have one of those fancy instruments that can take the values and generate computer-derived waves. And doing this by hand is too tedious. But this might give you an idea why the actual power is not seen by the, the utility meter. In fact, per each phase we have half positive and half negative power, which averages to zero. That's not true in reality, and all that reactive power is lost. As we have seen, the efficiency is pretty poor, the lack of isolation and the ugly power factor make this typology of power supply something to avoid in general when designing a new project. For DIY projects, one may wonder whether this solution is still convenient when we can collect plenty of small pluggable switching power supplies recovered from dismissed cell phones, routers, etc. that are pretty efficient provide isolation and have decent power factor. Hope you found interesting this work. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.